Minecraft 1.19 can be difficult, but this video will make it easier and more fun with these 20 useful things you should start doing in Minecraft. If you've just summoned in the Warden by accident, it's actually rather easy to make it not kill you. Just craft a trapdoor, and also with a Silk Touch Diamond Toe, or really anything with Silk Touch, break two of the sensors, then take those two sensors, Place them down next to each other and place a trapdoor in between. And those sensors will go on and off constantly. And those will send signals to the warden, which will distract it. And you can see the warden's curiosity is completely occupied by these two skulk sensors with the trapdoor in between. Basically, they form a clock that will permanently turn on and off this trapdoor, sending a signal every single time. And of course, I am still shifting to be safe. But sometimes it's even so distracted you can walk up right next to it without it even going after you, like I'm doing right now. It's kind of funny having a completely peaceful warden in survival. Of course, if you do touch it or punch it, then it'll go after you. But you can be right next to it, look right at the warden, even jump up and down. And whatever you do, the warden will stay occupied with those two sensors and the trapdoor. So you've even sort of tamed this warden in a way. Either trading from piglins or just making it yourself in a brewing stand, you can get a splash potion of fire resistance of three minutes and then you can extend it to eight minutes. This is something I would suggest bringing with you every single time you're in the nether or really in any place around lava because let's say we fall off into lava by accident if we look straight up and throw that potion of fire resistance you can see we now have it we're in the lava completely safe and even though we were falling down we were still able to throw that and get the effect so maybe you're raiding a nether fortress and you fall off of the edge you can use that to be saved. Raiding end cities can be difficult, but Mojang has given us a very easy item to use to make it much easier. Simply break one of the chorus plants before you go to raid it. So we go to raid the end city, and at any stage of it, there's a very high chance of getting hit by one of the shulker pellets. The problem is, oftentimes the fall from that is deadly. So if you eat one of the chorus fruits while you're in the air, you will teleport to the ground safely, taking absolutely no fall damage as long as you're still levitating when you eat the chorus fruit. And this makes some very high drops from the top of the end cities, much less deadly, especially if you don't have feather falling boots. Chorus fruits can be a very easy and convenient way to save your life when end raiding. Something I would always suggest doing when you're mining is to not mine up the ores you find with a fortune pickaxe. Now of course eventually you want to mine them with fortune, but what I would actually suggest is to mine them with silk touch first. The reason why is that things like lapis can drop up to 32 lapis with one ore block. Even if seen right here, I broke four pieces of lapis and have over a stack of it. And now that fortune works on every single ore in the game, your inventory can fill up super quickly. And after you've mined some things, if you have a shulker box with you, you can put them in there, saving even more room. So something like this can go from multiple stacks into just one stack. And this will enable you to mine for longer because you don't have to worry about all the raw ore and all all the materials you get, clogging up your inventory, and you can just fill them with the ore blocks. One of my favorite new tricks in 1.19 is to make a one block aquarium with the mangrove root or the jungle leaf block. However, it's not quite as simple as placing one of these down and then putting the bucket of mob in there, as the mob will just appear above. So we'll place the water bucket in the top and the tropical fish in the bottom, and we'll break and replace that very quickly and break the bottom block, and we now have a working aquarium in Minecraft. We can of course do the exact same thing with the axolotl. We'll put the water bucket in the top, put the axolotl in the bottom, the problem with these is they're very smart, so we have to be careful. What you can do if you're on Java is hold down left click and right click at the same time while being very close to the bottom block. This way the second it's broken, ideally that block will be placed, then we can break the bottom block and that mob will stay there. However, a word of warning, if there's water nearby, the mob will learn how to get out of it with its AI. So if we do that, you'll notice the axolotl instantly comes out. Whereas when that wasn't there, it just didn't know how. Same with this fish, you can see that right here. Once there's water nearby in a big flowing pattern, that fish can come out very quickly. But unless that happens, you have a completely working aquarium in Minecraft using literally one block. You could use a fishing rod in Minecraft to catch yourself dinner but there's a much cooler alternative use you can use them for. So the alternative use is the fishing rods can hook onto mobs and move them. So for instance, if we right click right now, that mob will come towards us. Now obviously this cow didn't move very much, 
but if we were further away from it. So if you're much further away from them, so for instance right here, when we right click you can see that cow will go flying extremely far and this can definitely be used to your advantage and is also quite fun especially considering that as long as you don't hurt them they take no damage this can even work on villagers if you just finished an awesome map that you're proud of but you want to mark out certain things on there there is a way to do this get out an anvil and put a banner in the anvil and name it whatever you want you don't actually have to name it but it improves the process so we'll let's say have this be named mighty mountain that's what we want this to be marked out as on our map now we're going to grab the specific map that we want our marking to be on and we're going to walk to the exact area where we want this to be marked out so for instance we'll put our banner here now we'll right click with our map on the banner that's been placed down and it'll actually put a marker right on there as well as the title of the marker so that banner is like a waypoint for your map and you can see even when we place it back down it's still on there it can be a little bit difficult to see but overall it's definitely a really cool thing to have especially if you have a massive mega map with tons of locations you can have a really great way of knowing where different things are and it even shows the color of the banner as well as the name you never have to clean things in Minecraft, right? Well, you don't have to, but there is an ability to clean items in the game. And it's one of the only unique uses of cauldrons in Java Edition, but it works in both versions. If you fill up cauldrons with water and get out basically any dyeable item, so this wouldn't be, let's say, maybe a colored concrete, but things like shulker boxes, leather tunics or leather clothes, banners, and horse armor, if you right click with them in water, you will clean them, taking off the dye. So this works with the shulker boxes as well, the leather clothes, and you'll notice the water level of the cauldrons go down. But where it's especially useful is as a sort of eraser for the banners. So if you put down a pattern on your banner you do not like, right click with it in water and it'll take off one pattern. You can even see those patterns being taken off. So right now it has that line, that square and the outside part. But if we right click on the water here, it'll take down that a level. And now that line across it is gone. And if we right click two more times, draining out that cauldron, you can see it's now fully yellow. So if they're ever dyed the wrong color, that's how you clean things in Minecraft. Just make sure not to use too hot of a dryer on them. A really cool trick you can do in 1.19 is to use skulk sensors to make automatically opened doors. You can have those sensors anywhere out of sight, and then you can have a really easy way of going through a door without having any pressure plates, levers, or things like that. But we could take this secret door up a notch by having it be only a distraction to the true secret door, which is right over here. If we go into this fountain here, that'll have the true secret door activate, which will make us go through this wall right here, giving us an access to a secret area with our emergency water storage. But of course, you could make this much more interesting, and basically, just the way we have this happening is this sensor has two inputs one going to the door here and the other one is going to a comparator that will only activate if you are swimming so swimming powers this on at level three but not at level four so this little circuit says that if this is powered on at level three but not at level four then it'll turn on and i talk more about skulk sensors and what power levels do what things in my 1.19 redstone guide and i'll have an i card on the screen for that but either way with these awesome skulk sensors you can make amazing red redstone for both conventional uses and also secret uses which i think is incredibly cool considering that those sensors can discern between different sounds or frequencies if you're about to smelt a bunch of items in a furnace and you have coal to do it you're probably just going to put those coal right in there but that's actually super inefficient if you turn the coal into coal blocks that will make the coal much more efficient so it can smelt eight more items basically each piece of coal will smelt eight items so between all those coal that's 72 items so between nine pieces of coal they can smelt 72 items however if we put those nine coal into the crafting grid into a block of coal not only is that more efficient space wise but that block of coal will smelt 80 blocks, which is 8 more blocks than the normal coal would. So next time you're going to be smelting with coal, make sure to use the coal block as it is so much more efficient. If there are a bunch of chat messages you want to get rid of just because you don't want to see them, or maybe you don't want to include them in something for whatever reason, or maybe even just you don't want to have all the stuff you can scroll through, all you have to do is press F3 on your keyboard plus D, and that will clear the chat. You can see here when I message again, 
That starts as a new message and every single previous thing in there that anyone said, the server, players, just anything that would appear in chat is all deleted permanently. Just as if let's say you left a game and rejoined it or left a server and rejoined it. Definitely a very good tip if you want to clear things up. Something I like doing in Minecraft is grabbing some flowers for dye, then making some signs, preferably on dark oak, and putting whatever I want on them. Then right clicking on the sign with the dye and right clicking with the glow ink sack to make a sort of neon sign that really does show up well, especially at night, even from far away, which I think is quite cool. However, if you're just looking for a bright sign and not necessarily something on it, you can make this even more interesting by using the Unicode character U plus 2588 full block. Because if you place down a sign and fill it to the brim with that Unicode full block character, then dye it whatever you want and right click on it with the glow ink sack, you have an incredibly bright and vibrant sign that is fully filled up with that bright light, which I think can be really cool for things like pixel art. Now of course you can't have more than one color on a sign, but you could have multiple signs all next to each other all with different colors to make a super cool neon advertisement, but even just this glowing sign here is perfect for any sort of city you want to make. Maybe a futuristic city at night or just a really modern city with lots of lights. Have you ever been using Elytra and thought what I'm doing is probably inefficient? There's got to be an easier way to do this. Well, there is. If you turn on your F3 menu or sort of just guess it, if you can go at 45 degree angles up and down, you can fully conserve all of your momentum, basically allowing you to fly with your Elytra infinitely or at very least until your elytra breaks. Because flying at perfect 45 degree angles, you barely lose even a block of velocity every single time you go up and down. And it's almost the exact same speed as normal elytra flight. An item I've seen very few players use, but one that I think is incredibly useful is the lodestone. Crafted with chiseled stone bricks and netherite, but don't let the netherite turn you off from using this item, because it is one of the most useful items in the game when you use it correctly. So let's say you have a massive world and your base is nowhere near 0, zero the place where compasses usually point to. If you make a lodestone, you can change that. So place your lodestone down at the location you want your compasses to point to, and right click with one of your compasses on the lodestone. That compass will now point towards that lodestone. So for instance right here, we can see this compass is pointing this direction, and all these compasses are pointing the other direction. Then you can have those lodestone compasses maybe at spawn or even just at your base, and you'll know which directions go where because you can give a player a lodestone compass of that type. They can lead it over to the area. And it's also the only item in the game where just right clicking will give you a completely brand new item turning the compass into a lodestone compass. Let's say you're in a difficult situation, you can actually just freeze your game by pressing F3 plus escape. This is a very interesting way of pausing the game that I haven't seen most players use. I believe it's the only official way of pausing because the escape screen is actually going to a menu. This pause screen has the title up here that says game paused. Now pressing F3 plus escape again, it will unpause the game. And of course, from that point on, we can analyze what to do. But in any situation where you want to pause, but you don't want to lose access to seeing what's around you, you can use F3 plus escape. Now, unfortunately, this does not work with F1 turned on because this game pause text will still show up and of course this wouldn't work on servers but in the scenarios where it does work it can be good for avoiding death and also for having an interesting way of pausing the game powdered snow is definitely an annoying danger to have to deal with in the game but you can solve it with leather armor so if you have any piece of leather armor on and you go into powdered snow you will still sink into it but you will not take any freeze damage i guess the idea would be this would be keeping you warm you can notice once I take this off, I do start to freeze, but the second we put it back on, I will start to unfreeze because it's warming me up. Now, the other thing that has a bit of a different functionality is the leather boots. If we have those on, we won't freeze, but we can also traverse through the powdered snow sort of like scaffolding. We can walk on top of it, we can shift to go down into it. But overall, leather boots are the best thing to do, and turning powdered snow from a danger into a utility item is great, and I also like how the normal leather items do have a functionality with that as well, making you not freeze. An incredibly useful villager that I think people should use more is the mason. In fact, I would say they're the best villager in the game outside of the librarian, basically because you can get tons of materials from them that you don't have to collect yourself. So for instance, quartz blocks that can be hard to get, also things like the glazed terracottas can be quite time consuming to get as well as that their brick trade is great giving you a bunch of bricks something that usually 
takes a lot of time and furnace fuel, but with the mason villager you get two and a half bricks for one emerald, and even the things you sell to them are great. For instance, clay ball for emeralds, stone for emeralds, and granite for emeralds. These are incredibly cheap and easy trades to get, especially if you zombify them down to an even cheaper price. And having a massive setup with tons of them, you can finally make your very own quartz palace. You may be wondering how I'm doing this right now in my inventory, but it's super easy to do even in survival. All you have to do is use your number keys when you're in your inventory. Basically what happens is this will swap with whatever number you press. So of course this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So like with this, we can go 1 and switch that with this. We can go 2, 3, 4, 5 and switch these around really easily. This is great because let's say we have a hotbar with some useful items on it, but then we want to switch to something else. We can simply use the number keys to switch those around, making that super efficient. Because for instance, if your hotbar does not have a water bucket on it, but you need it for an MLG jump, when you press your inventory, your mouse will always be over this slot right here. And if you put a water bucket there and you're currently selecting, let's say, slot number 5, then you could just press E and 5 and then escape and you could have that water bucket on your slot ready to use without having to go through the process of manually opening this up moving it over and then pressing that. And this keyboard shortcut is not only fun but also incredibly useful and it's a great way of quickly moving items around your inventory. Moss carpets at first glance may seem like a fairly useless item, that is until you place them next to grass and realize this block looks almost identical to grass. So if you're trying to have some concealed lighting in an area, this is definitely the best way to do it. Place those down, place the moss carpets on top, and you can have a super cool way of having your area be lit up without even sensing that there is a light there. And not only does the moss carpet blend in super well, it also allows you to use a cheap item like the torch to spawn proof an area beautifully. You've probably been in the scenario when you place down a boat and you want to get into it, but the villagers decide they're going to go there first. Or maybe you've transported some villagers and you want to get them out of the boat, but it can be hard to do so without hurting the villagers and making them angry with you. Well, if you press F3 plus B on Java Edition, that will enable hitboxes, which makes it super easy to see where to break your boat. And of course, you can use this for other scenarios as well, just making any mob easier to see. So for instance, here now, we can see very clearly we can just break the boat there instead of hitting the villagers, because of course, if we're not within this white box, we would not be hurting them. And if you're wondering the red line you see on the hitbox there is the eyesight line for the player. Hopefully you enjoyed those 20 useful things you should start doing in Minecraft.